So was there a particular like moment thing that you had to do that was like, okay, I am now a witch? She'd be like, I'm here to give you your first lesson in witchcraft. I'm a teenager at this point. Even me, I'm scared because I'm like, what is about to come out of this conversation? Maybe Lucifer was right and God was wrong. I want you, come. You don't want me? Let me light a candle real quick. I'll see you. And I heard his mother's praying for him. You cannot do that to him. Why did doing a tarot reading like that lead me down such a dark spiral? This is not love and light. This is not peace and sunshine. Like people try to make these practices out to be. God kidnapped me. I was his enemy. He still loved me enough to bring me back. Yeah. Amen. Hello guys, welcome back to another episode of The Wummy Bello Show and boy oh boy do I have an episode for you today. I originally had a whole intro kind of written out but I just kind of want to roll off whatever comes off my tongue right now. Um, so about two years ago I, and I've said this before in an episode, if you guys remember when I did my, my solo episode, the rebirth episode, I said that I went down this kind of like deep spiral of going into like tarot readings and that leading me to like a huge identity crisis I want to call it where I just was I felt like my root was just completely shifting and I didn't really know who I was what I'm doing what's this what's this because at some point in my journey I was obsessed with like knowing answers to things and wanting to do tarot readings let me know about you know career things personal things just various just seeking for for answers to fulfill something that felt like was missing within me in this season of my life or in this element of you know where I'm at right now it's more of an understanding of like all the various buzzwords that we hear nowadays whether it's about um african spirituality tarot readings um, astrology um halloweens and the myths and the the truths around it all of those things are things that i'm like there has to be an element of truth somewhere that we are able to kind of um we're able to kind of like sit down and have a conversation about the truth the the lies the the myths everything surrounding all of these various things that we see going on every other day so that is what we're doing today about a year ago i saw a video on tiktok of a woman who she was a witch she was a witch and she was talking about it on her TikTok. And I remember seeing the video and I was thinking, damn, this lady's really out here on the internet talking about, you know, her being a witch and her coming out, out coming, becoming, being a witch and then coming out of that and what kind of happened. And I was like, at some point, I'm definitely going to speak to this woman. Like, I don't know why I just felt convicted by it. And so today I'm here with Sarah and we are about to have a serious conversation. Just so you know, some of the things that we'll be covering, we'll be talking about her journey into and out of witchcraft, whether things like Halloween, African spirituality, astrology, crystals, etc., are harmless fun or do they have spiritual implications? We're going to be talking about that and so much more. So sit tight because it's about to be a really heavy one and I'm very excited. Sarah, hey, how are you? I'm so good. Thank you for having me on. I'm Thanks. excited. I'm excited. I'm, you know, I'm so excited. Thank you for doing this. Thank you for agreeing because I know it's quite big. This is like your first time of having quite like an in depth conversation about. Your testimony, essentially. Yeah, I haven't spoken about it before. Um, and I just felt like maybe this was the right time. Maybe yeah. this was God's ordained time. So, ready when you are. I agree. Okay, cool. So before we get into the bulk of things, I like to like play a little game just to ease you into things, even ease myself into things. I can't lie, even me, I'm scared because I'm like, what is about to come out of this conversation? I don't know. So cool, let's go into it. We're gonna play a game of this or that. Okay. All right, so it's just a little, you know, this, that, that, that. Cool, so Christmas or Easter celebrations? Easter. Okay. Yeah. Early bird or night owl? Night owl. TikTok or Instagram? Oh, TikTok. Okay, You nice. found me there, didn't you? You said quick with it. <laughs> yeah. Okay, sweet or salty? Salty. Group coaching or one-on-one -on -one mentoring? Group coaching. Group coaching. Yeah. Okay. I love community. Let's get into it. All right. So I want to start off really just going from the beginning of everything, really be going from how you found yourself in a world where you are actually practicing witchcraft. So walk me from that space first. Okay, so I think that it only makes sense kind of if I give you the background of my spirituality yeah. and um, everything I experienced in spirituality. So from as young as I could remember, I used to always hear voices and they would be calling my name. Right? So my birth name is Tanaka. So they'd always be like Tanaka, Tanaka, Tanaka. 
and it got to a point where I would be unsure because it would just always take the voice of my parents. So I got to a point where my mother and my father would call me and I wouldn't go because I used to go to them so often they'd be like, nobody's calling you. So when they would call me, I wouldn't go. Then when I'd hear the voice, I'd come to them like, yes, what's up? They'd be like, nobody's calling you. So I spent a lot of my childhood just in a really strange place um, with a lot of paranoia and stuff like this. And as that continued, I'm a Christian at this point, but I used to have these really vivid dreams of, um, at one point I even had a dream of a man who came to me in my dream. And there was a pentagram, you know, a pentagram. Um, um, it's the five-sided, five five-pointed star they use in witchcraft. And there'd be a pentagram in my dreams, like on the floor. And he'd be like, I'm here to give you your first lesson in witchcraft. I'm a teenager at this point. And he'd be teaching me things like how to fly, how to come out of my body, how to cast spells as a teenager. This is in your dreams, sorry. This is, this is in my dreams. Yeah. But I'm a Christian at this point. Then um, there was another dream that I had where I was given, this was like midnight in my dream. And I was given um, human flesh and blood to eat. After I ate it within the dream, I began to fly in my dream. From that point on, I had all these really weird abilities in human life, right? So I could look at somebody and I would just hear this person's about to get a piercing. I'm in high school at this point. So like I could even ask somebody, I see that you want to get a piercing here, is that right? They'd be like, oh yeah, I've actually booked a piercing uh, to get it in that place. So that's kind of where I was, right? But I was, I grew up in a very Bible-believing church, very on fire, I can never, like, very, very on fire. I saw healings, miracles, deliverances, but I also didn't understand why all these things were happening to me. And I'd always kind of seek for answers and ask the pastor. And like, he'd give me some insight, like, oh, these things are happening and this is witchcraft and this and that. But for some reason, I couldn't get it to stop. There was always this very deep pull to that world, even though I hadn't had any physical access to it. Mm -hmm. I did want to ask, so when yeah. you were having those dreams, what were the conversation like with your parents about them? Oh, yeah. Um, I'd tell my parents, so here's the thing, my, my grandfather is a bishop. Mm -hmm. So my mother grew up um, in church. My dad, on the other hand, they were very much into African spirituality, and this comes back around later on. So they were very much into African uh, rituals, ancestor stuff. Yeah doing all those kind of things. So I think kind of maybe that's where my spirit was being so confused as well, because it was two different worlds. But as I was talking to them, they really didn't know what to do about it. And I think at a certain point, they just started ignoring it. Like, okay, I don't think they wanted to face that. Is our child crazy or something? Because this voice thing is really real. What was it like kind of having a dad that was practicing, like that was deep in African spirituality? So I wouldn't say that he was deep in it because he himself, when he was growing up, he used to preach. Um, but his family background is like that. Okay. We weren't really exposed to it that much, um, but I always knew that it was kind of there. Yeah. And much later on in the story, as I go on, I'll explain how those things, when I started walking with spirit guides, they definitely used to talk to me about older people in my family who passed the magic down to me. But yeah, so now when I started getting into witchcraft, I met this guy. Mm -hmm. and we were hanging out, mm -hmm. if you got what I mean, mm -hmm. and he was a smoker. Mm -hmm. So we would smoke and chill consistently, and he had this one book in his room that was about magic, mm -hmm. and that just kind of stuck with me. It just stuck with me, the idea of magic. And when I began to smoke, I started thinking about a lot of things in life and about a lot of things don't make sense, and how come... I'm a Christian, but these weird things keep happening to me. And then I started thinking about all the pain I'd gone through in my life. And just even when I used to hang out with that guy, he used to always say, like, God can't be real because bad things happen to good people. And that really stuck with me because I was like, bad things have happened to me. Like, bad, really bad things. I was um, sexually abused as a child um, multiple times, pretty bad, to the point where I had gender confusion. I thought I was a guy. Well, I thought I was a guy in a girl's body. Um, I had same-sex attraction. Yeah. And I just started thinking, like, you know what? God actually can't be real. Because if he was real 
and my parents are Christian and I'm a Christian, these things wouldn't have happened to me. Mm. And I begin to have this kind of anger now that just kind of sparked this anger towards God, this feeling of injustice. And then things in church started to rise up, like, you know, gossip, people talking, people judging, um, rumors that actually went true that started coming up about me. And also feeling like there's no one I could speak to or turn to. And that's when I just decided, like, you know, even if God is real, I don't care. I'm going to look for something that makes sense to me. How old are you at this point? This point, I'm now, like, 21. Okay. So this is like maybe like a year, year yeah. after. A year after. Okay. I quickly forgot about that event where mm -hmm. I made that promise. Yeah. Quickly forgot about it. Because I also thought maybe it was just a dream. Mm -hmm. Maybe I just imagined it. At this point now, I'm hanging out with my uncle. My uncle is very African spirituality. Very anti-Christianity, anti-religion, anti all those types of things. But he believes that the white man bought the Bible and it's manipulating us and all this type of stuff. And I was really buying into that. Yeah. Um, at this point, on TikTok, I used to make so much African content about... Um, that's actually how my following grew, off of the back of African spirituality. This is when I started getting more into libations. I started getting more into... What is libation? Libation is like um, when you pour out alcohol or water or anything like that onto soil or the ground for your ancestors. And I began to do those things and just honor my ancestors. And I started feeling something that I haven't felt before. I started feeling like I was walking with, I don't know how to explain it. I was walking with things that were protecting me and that loved me in a way that I haven't, hadn't felt that in Christianity. Okay. Just to clarify, yeah. I'm just thinking about the, your uncle that you were talking about. So... When he speaks about African spirituality, is it attached to God? Is it that they're, like, we're serving God, but in our own way? Uh, yes and no. He thinks that the, um, well, the way it was explained to me, and forgive me, uncle, if you watch this, and I'm ruining what you used to say, but there was this idea that the concept of God that we have is a white man's version of God. Mm -hmm. But for us, um, we had multiple, like, specifically, I want to talk about ancient Egyptian type of understanding of God, because they had multiple gods, yeah. right? Uh, although they also believe that their multiple gods also just an expression of one, some, something weird like that, because I believe there was like 12 essences or something. And that's where you get like Thor, um, Isis, all those other deities. And he used to explain that this is, this is what makes sense to us. And touching on the Yoruba side of, um, uh, what do you call them? The... Oshun, okay, yeah. Ogun, uh, what's, what's the word for them? Orishas, yes. I remember I started getting more into that and feeling a very deep attachment to um, uh, Oshun especially. So when Beyonce came out with that song where she was wearing all yellow and really angry, I was like, that's it. I, I'm with you, Beyonce. Why were you so attached to Oshun? Um, so from my understanding, you couldn't just pick an Orisha. They kind of had to pick you. Okay. And when I was looking into it, and I was just thinking like, well, I want the Orisha to come to me, I used to have dreams in line with the aspects that Oshun used to demonstrate. So I had a lot of twin imagery within my dreams, a lot of uh, two, two things, I don't know how else to explain it, and also a lot of water. I know water can sometimes be like Yamaya, but in the way that I saw it, it was a lot of gold, yellows within the water side. And that's how I just knew that, okay, I'm here. I'm, I'm on her side. Mm. It's very long, getting back to the idea that I was very angry at God. I started doing more TikToks now, TikTok lives even. And there would be people coming up in the comment section being like, oh, hey, I'm a witch, but I'm a good witch, and I do good witchcraft. And this is the first time I kind of thought about the difference between good and bad witchcraft. Right? Mm -hmm. Because I just thought, from my Christian understanding, all witchcraft is bad. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I began to ask them more questions, and I fell into the TikTok rabbit hole of just different rituals and different gods and different deities and just a surplus of knowledge that I fell into. And for the first time, it began to feel like maybe Christianity really just destroyed my whole understanding of the spiritual realm. I felt like I was walking into knowledge that had been hidden. I don't know if you've ever seen this, this picture, this drawing, 
it's very popular in like um, alchemy spaces and stuff like that where it's like a person who lifts a veil mm -hmm. and they see like a whole new world and it's this idea that when you get into knowledge when you get into the occult you get illuminated mm -hmm. with all this new knowledge for example the idea of god the apple lucifer lucifer allowed you to have the apple because he wanted you to have knowledge mm -hmm. and that's where i was drawn to so when i started doing more witchcraft now doing different spells um going into deep meditations i started realizing i started realizing that maybe this is at the very extreme end maybe lucifer was right and god was wrong I went from being angry at God and wanting to like deny his existence to having experienced so much real things in the spiritual realm, mm -hmm. like spells, uh, like casting spells, like spirit guides. Mm -hmm. So in your mind, you kind of convince yourself that Lufusar... Yeah. Lufusar. It's not meant to be. I don't like these people. <laughs> I'm just not surprised. Look, I'm wearing white. So I just Amen. don't belong. Anyway, Lucifer. Okay, so in your mind, you've made up that, you, you kind of concluded that Lucifer is right and maybe God is wrong. What happens after that? Okay, I'm going to take you back a little bit. So i had been working with uh, spirit guides. Mm -hmm. So there was a day I went, I was still living with my mum, and I went to her home. And I felt again this presence, something was around me, something wanted to contact me. And I don't know how to explain that feeling, but it's just, it even feels like paranoia, to be honest with you. And I go into the bedroom and I sit down, then something just tells me um, automatic writing. And I don't know what that is, so I begin to Google it. And automatic writing is a form of divination, where you kind of turn off your mind and you just let yourself write. It's almost like you give your arm to something else to begin to write. So. I begin to take a piece of paper and a pen, and I just begin to write. And I'm, write, I'm writing so quick, like quicker than I've ever written before. It's like I wrote two pages within a minute. Mm -hmm. And I look at it, and this, it's this whole message of, um, we are your spirit guides, there's four of us, we've been trying to contact you, we've been calling you since you were a child. Um, as you go on, we're going to begin to reveal ourselves to you so you can have a deeper relationship with us. I look at the paper and I'm reading it, because I didn't know what I wrote. That's the whole point, like you're detached. Yeah. And I'm thinking, I've definitely gone mad. Like, I need to talk to my parents. I need to get actual help because this is gonna get out of, out of hand. Then um, something just tells me like, just, just, just do it again, just do it again. And I begin to do it again. And I was like, if you don't believe that we're real, take a look at this stock, right? It was a specific stock, there was three letters in it. And it was like, watch it for the next two weeks. It's going to rise. As it rises, you're going to know that we're definitely real. I'm not into stocks. I don't know the name of any stocks. When I look at it, it is, it is a stock that's current, that was being used, um, this technology, solar power thingy. And within the next two weeks, it actually rose. And that's when I was like, okay, I began to go back. And when I decided to go back, I started researching more things of divination. So this is when I started getting introduced to more tarot card readings. I started getting introduced to crystal balls, to candle flames, um, how you can read a candle flame and it can tell you what spirits are in the room, how they're talking, you can ask questions, candle magic, where you set an intention on a candle and then you light it, you let it burn out or you blow it. So one thing that definitely got me in and eased me in the, is I, the idea that so many people practice magic without knowing it. So one thing that I hear a lot of witches say is, don't be afraid if you've ever blown out a birthday cake, you've practiced magic. Now I'm not gonna say that's real, that's not real, but I know that at the time I was like, I'm doing the same thing. I set an intention on a candle and I blow it out and that manifests itself, right? So now you're talking about like Lucifer and stuff. As I began to go into deeper meditations and I would go to a specific place um, where I'd see my spirit guides and they'd talk to me and they'd tell me things about people, about online. They'll tell me, okay, you're going to go make this video on TikTok. And that video would hit a million views in like three days, really quickly. Mm -hmm. um, they'd tell me, stop talking about this topic, that topic. So I knew that they were topics? real. So some of the topics were 
libations. That's when I started talking about African spirituality on my platform. Um, I write poetry. Now, this is a very big thing. I write poetry and um, I am a poet. But at that time, I began to practice more mediumship because when I would write out a poem, I wasn't really thinking, okay, what do I want to say? I'd just be sitting there and I'd hear out a full poem and I'd just begin to write it out, just write it out. And then I'd perform it and it hit like 250,000 views. Wow, this is so touching. And I'd literally be so disconnected from the work because it's not mine. Like I just sat there and I received it and I gave it to you. Um, yeah, so as I was going into these like deeper meditations, they started introducing me to other deities. So in my meditations, I had a garden that they were in. There was four spirit guides. There was two men, a woman, and, um, and a, how do I explain this? I would say like a black panther. It looked like a black panther, but it was just, it was like a big cat. Mm -hmm. And I know that that is connected to my grandmother because she, um, her totem is a, is a lion, right? And later on, when I get more into African spirituality, explaining that, I'll explain how that ended up coming back around. Like my grandmother's spirit always was around me, especially in that place. So my spirit guide started being swapped out. They started saying, okay, well, we've gotten this far with you. Some of us can't stay now. There's other people coming to teach you more, mm -hmm. to help you more in your journey. And as they left, these deities would come in, for example, the deity Lilith. So that's when I first started understanding and researching more about her. And I think this is the point where my physical aesthetic really changed. The way that I was talking to people really changed. And I became more outwardly, um, I would use the phrase sexually liberated because that's the phrase that everybody else would use. But really I became more in bondage to sexuality. Okay. Right. What was the, because I was watching a video the other day um, as I kind of was preparing for our conversation and this woman was saying like in order for you to actually become a witch there's like certain things that you need to do like it, it's kind of like you're joining a gang, like you're joining a cult so there's expectations so what was the, was there a particular shift, was there a particular like moment thing that you had to do that was like okay I am now a witch? You can just start practicing witchcraft, like anybody can just start practicing mm. witchcraft but you will have phases of different initiations. Mm -hmm. If you want to join a coven, for example, that's a group of witches. Mm -hmm. um, for me, just before I got saved, um, this is where the Lucifer part comes in. I was going to give my first blood offering, which was my own blood, on an altar to make a covenant with Lucifer. Yeah, so it's crazy. Wow. Does that answer the question? Yeah, it does. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, so going back to kind of like working with Lilith and stuff, mm -hmm. And really, I think what people think, because in the scripture, she's called a demon of the night, mm -hmm. right? But within people who call themselves like daughters of Lilith, like I consider myself a daughter of Lilith. It's an incredible, it, the feeling is unmatched. Well, let me not say that because yeah. God's feeling is the best. Yeah. But at that time, I was so broken by church hurt. I was broken by abuse from childhood, from feeling like I really didn't fit in. So coming to this place where you have this deity and you can feel like when her spirit enters a room, like these things are really real. Mm -hmm. You can feel it. And for me, it was this motherly vibe. And just this idea of even when you read uh, things about her or, or have meditations with her dwelling on and contemplating and having her speak to you when you do offerings of candles or whatever it is that you're doing. And just this feeling of protection that I really didn't feel before. I didn't feel protected by my family. Mm. I didn't feel protected by my church. Mm. So when you're worshiping these idols and these demons, you f you, they, they are very vengeance ready. You know how the Bible says that God, vengeance is mine, says God. For them, they're like, don't let anyone treat you like that. You can, you can do a sacrifice for me right now and we can deal with them. You can, you can handle that situation. And it's just this liberating feeling that I can't get hurt anymore. Yeah. Nobody can hurt me. I'm not that little child anymore. Unprotected. Unprotected. Yeah. Um, and for me, because I'd been sexually abused, and I'd been sexually abused by a woman, which was the reason that my sexuality was so messed up, and my perspective on myself was so messed up, I started falling deeply and more freely into my same-sex attraction. And just being in those meditations with her saying, like, there's nothing wrong with you. 
Like, you don't have to hide that. You can be yourself. In fact... Lilith was saying this. Yes. Okay. In fact, where they made you feel like your sexuality was wrong and took it from you, you go give it to whoever you want to give it to. And that's when I was so free, like, sexually. Mm. I want you. Come. I want you. Come. You don't want me? Let me light a candle real quick. I'll see you. Did you ever do that? Uh, <laughs> there was one situation where there was this guy... Um, and I don't know what he said to me, but he he really pissed me off. Mm. Like it really made me quite upset. And I knew my power, and I knew what I could do because I've, I'd. I know that even when I said things, they would come to pass in somebody's life, mm. right? So I was like, okay, I'm gonna deal with the situation. I'm gonna do a little spell. And in the spell ritual thing that I was doing, you'd light something up and let it completely burn. And when it finishes burning, it's done. When I burnt it, when I started burning it, and it's paper, there was something written on the paper with different spices and herbs on it to really give it that razzle-dazzle. <laughs> razzle-dazzle is insane. <laughs> what? When I lit it now, it lit, for like two sec- it lit for like two seconds, like this much. And if you know anything about lighting paper, like it lights, it stopped lighting immediately. And I heard one of my spirit guys whisper to the, my right ear, don't do that again. And I was like, first of all, you've never told me that. So, and I was very hard-headed, stubborn. It's like, I'm going to finish, I'm going to finish this guy. He cannot treat me like this. I began to light it again and it lit halfway through and it stopped. And I heard his mother's praying for him. You cannot do that to him. That's when I, I let that paper go and I walked in. And that's when I started thinking something's wrong. Like, mm. I, like, we are the most powerful. Like, what do you mean? Exactly. Why are you saying his mother's praying for him? Because he was like, forgive me, I'm a Christian now, but at the time I'd call him a scumbag, mm. right? Like, he doesn't deserve anybody's protection. Mm-hmm. And even though he professes Christianity, what's he doing over here with me? Mm. You know what I mean? In yeah. that time where, you know, Lilith has said to you, his mother's praying for him, and knowing what you know and coming from, like, a Christian background, was that, the, did you have a memory where you were thinking... How does that prayer have more power than what yeah. we're supposed to have? Yeah, but but um, my heart was already turned against God. Mm-hmm. So you know when the Bible says their hearts are hardened, so even if God shows them his power, they won't yeah. listen. So even though I saw, like I'd been trumped immediately, mm. like twice, I was still like, I don't care. I just, I just left. I didn't even want to think about it because it was irritating me. It wasn't even like, oh, I did something bad. Mm. It was more irritating that I couldn't do what I wanted to do. Yeah. So, go back onto like the journey. Yeah. After I'd um, kind of worked with Lilith for a bit, and I'd had an altar in my room. Um, uh, not in my room. Now it's my office, but at that time it was like a spiritual room for me mm-hmm. where I just go and meditate and do different things and read cards and all that type of stuff and smoke weed. I used to smoke a lot of weed to get into a different mindset. Then I can do different like rituals and stuff. Was that something that you were taught to do? Like, was that a part of it? Like, oh, if you smoke weed, you it's are not, able to go to a higher dimension or It's what? not something that I was taught to do. Mm. It's just something that I found worked really well. Mm. But as I began to explore magic more, and when I say magic, I mean magic with a K, um, you'll see that they do a lot of changing your, um, what do you call it, your conscious, changing, altering your consciousness. Mm. So they put you on different drugs. So then you can tap into the spiritual realm more okay. easily. I didn't know that at that point because I hadn't studied to that point. Okay. But I just found... When I'm high, things work higher. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. things work easier. Sorry, treat me like a baby because when you said ma- magic with a K, what does that mean? What's so the difference. So, are you are you familiar with Alistair Crowley? Okay, so he he is um, he's referred to as the Beast, right? Mm-hmm. He's um, basically like a Satanist, like really, really terrible. Um, and he did when he began to write his book he would use magic with a K to differentiate between illusion magic okay. and like the real magic. magic stuff. So that's where you see a lot of like ceremonial magic mm-hmm. where people do like sex rituals and uh, sacrifices and stuff like that. That's magic with a K. Okay. That's wow. not like pick a card. Okay. That's magic with a C. Do you understand? Yeah. Yeah. Wow, thank you for that clarity. <laughs> <I> <laughs> no worries. So 
Now I'm in my office. I'm going into a meditation. In fact, I think I was even making a wig for someone yeah. in my office, um, in what was my spiritual room now. Uh, sorry to that person if you bought that wig. But oh, <laughs> anyway. Oh my god! Oh my god! Does it transfer in that way though? Like, would can it? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, because it's it's in a room that's full of witchcraft, right? Which is why even for me now, um, where I am, I don't tend to wear a lot of hair, especially because of some things that I've seen spiritually or that I was taught spiritually even in that place. Um, but now I don't tend to wear a lot. I wear sometimes, mm -hmm. but I tend to try and stay away from it, especially when I'm doing anything to do with God. Now, um, I'm in that room. I'm doing that. All of a sudden, this, this, this um, presence walks, I say walks in, but enters. Mm. Now, I'm not familiar with this particular presence. I know what my spirit guides feel like, talk like. I know what Lilith is like. I don't know what this one is like. So I'm just there, and I'm like, who is this? They're just asking, who, 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 who is this? And um, it makes me, at that time, it made me laugh. Now it's just a bit weird. But I hear Aphrodite. And I'm just like, this is, I'm like, this is ridiculous. I got too high today. I got too high because this is Greek mythology. This isn't real. Mm -hmm. This is the, the storybooks. Yeah. And it's like, it didn't say anything. Um, I don't know if I, you've any, watched any of my other videos where I touched a little bit on um, spirituality, but every spirit has a different personality. Mm -hmm. They're not all the same. Mm -hmm. Every demon has a different personality. This one had a very different personality. So even when I was freaking out, being like, this isn't real, it, it, it was very like, take me seriously. Mm. So then she said, I want an offering from you. I want chocolate and I want wine. And I was just like, what? So I go downstairs, I'm like, let me just, let, let me entertain it a little bit to see if I can get more information. I go downstairs and luckily I had, it specifically asked for red wine. Yeah. Because I do so many libations, I did have red wine. So I had red wine, I took some chocolate. And then I was like, let me just check. I go on my phone and I look up, because um, uh, some people do worship Aphrodite, I didn't know, in paganism. Mm -hmm. And I looked up, what offerings is Aphrodite like? And it said, red wine and chocolate. And I was like, okay, this is real. So I go upstairs, I put my red wine on the altar, my chocolate on the altar, and from that point, she was like, you're going to serve me, but you're going to serve me in the realm of making people fall in love. And also, you have a self-confidence issue that needs to be fixed. So now I'm working on shadow work. I'm working on self-confidence and um, not, not uh, being assertive and not loving myself. So this came with a lot of, again, sex magic, but in the form of masturbation now mm. to cultivate. It's a really terrible form but it is a form of self-love even through those eyes mm -hmm. now i know we're getting all the way to lucifer right now i'm i have these deities now i'm a yeah. pagan where i didn't think i was going to be a pagan because i have multiple gods that i'm serving okay and i have my spirit guides is that allowed like yeah that's okay. pa that's paganism okay. where you have multiple gods you basically you mix and match really um then i'm in my living room now my heatings are on. I don't like cold. But my room goes extremely icy, just extremely ice cold. And there's this breeze that's walking through and I'm just full of fear, just complete full of fear. And I realize like instantaneously, Lucifer's just walked in the room. And I don't know how I knew that, but I knew it immediately. The presence is not like any of these other goddesses or deities or spirit guides. It is almost royal in a way. So then I'm just silent. I didn't ask, oh, who's this? Why are you here? Da, da, da. I'm just completely silent. And then he goes, you've been wrong about me. And I'm like, hmm, I'm scared. My heart is racing. Mm -hmm. He's like, you've been wrong about me and you need to learn the truth. Then he says, go on your phone. When I go on my phone, my phone opens up to YouTube and it says, the first video that's there says, the real story about Lucifer. I went into a deep rabbit hole. God was wrong. Um, 
that he wanted you to have the knowledge god is a tyrannical ruler that doesn't want you to have enlightenment um then all of these things that happened through the enlightenment period when people started dropping religion and started going more into secularism all those kind of things and now i'm just feeling like wow like yeah, I was wrong. Like, Lucifer actually cares about people and all this type of stuff. And I ended up falling deep into Luciferianism. So, although there's a difference between different forms of Satanism and Luciferianism, for different parts of Satanism, people don't worship actual Satan. Mm -hmm. Like, they worship themselves. Okay. For Luciferianism, it's not... Some people do worship Lucifer, but the big idea is worship yourself. Worship knowledge. Try and get as much wisdom as you can. And this is what kind of led me into the occult practices. After you had that encounter and you were like, oh, Lucifer is is good or everything that you felt, what did you do with that information? Like, what acts did you then have to... What acts did you then take? Oh, then, um, then, of course, I was being prepped to do my first blood offering. Okay, that's when the blood offering... That's when the blood offering came about because it's like every spirit has a rank. Right, every demon has a rank, and Lucifer is not like God. He can't be everywhere at once. So if he's in, if some, if people are doing a ritual and he comes, he is not anywhere else in the world. Do you understand what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it's like you also have to be at a certain. You have to do certain initiations to be worthy of continuing to be in front of certain demons. Just like when people do magic circles, right? and they are um, summoning demons. Not every demon is kind because it can ask you, why did you summon me? Mm. Like, what reason do you have? Mm. And even, you don't even deserve to summon me. You're not even on this level, mm. you know what I mean? So yeah, that's kind of why I had to, I had to hurry up and do my own blood covenant with him to say that, yes, I am, I am part of you now. So it wasn't even like, this is not, oh, I don't believe God exists. No, I fully believe that the God of the Bible exists but he's terrible and his children are terrible because look at how they treat people and look how I turned out being part of the church. Like I'm hurt, I'm broken, I'm angry and the only people that seem like they love me are these, mm. yeah. The thing that kind of comes to my mind is, and it kind of goes off topic a little bit, but I'm just thinking about the various people who are out here trying to find answers to various things like yourself, you mm. know, who might come out and they're church hurt and they, they feel like I don't belong here, I'm trying to find my, and similar to you, you kind of went on this whole train of, wanting to get knowledge similar to me when I went into like tarot reading mm. wanting to get knowledge that that I felt like I wasn't getting or whatever else so I want to talk about Christianity versus like other practices and like just kind of seeing your perspective on it today I was watching quite a lot of stuff about um well this whole week to be fair watching quite a lot of stuff about tarot readings mm. and all of that and how much it can do to you when you label yourself a certain when you label yourself a certain um Zodiac. Yeah, zodiac sign. If you say I'm an Aries and you're now all of a sudden I'm a fiery person, I'm a Scorpio, and you become a jealous and a whatever is attached to being a Scorpio and all these various other star signs. So talk to me about that and how all of these things kind of work more so. I don't know if it works for Lucifer, or if it works for the devil or the demon. Like where does it sit? What what happens? What is it? Okay, cool. Um, I'll start off with a question for you, if you don't mind. Actually. Yeah. Okay. Give me. When you think about a demon, yeah. what do you think about? I just see red, I see just red. Angry. Angry. Scary. Yeah, it's not even angry, I just see scary and just darkness. Yeah. Yeah. So if you look at the word demon, mm -hmm. the original word for demon is diamond, right, in the Greek. And that doesn't necessarily mean something malevolent. It just means a, a, a higher spirit. Yeah. Or um, a... I won't even say like a deity, but just a higher form of a spirit of some sort. Mm -hmm. And if you look at the past of that word, even in, in Greek times and in Roman times, it didn't necessarily mean something evil. So many people worked freely with demons and saw demons. And that's where you get this idea of I do good magic, bad magic. Mm -hmm. I read tarot cards, but I do it for good. Yeah. Or I yeah. do healings, I do it for good. Mm -hmm. It's because in that realm, Demons don't always look angry. Mm -hmm. Some spirits will genuinely be like, oh, I want to help you. For example, when I told you in my experience, mm -hmm. it was like, they didn't come to me like, we want to damn your soul to hell. It was, you're hurt, let us, let us help you. The key point that people need to understand, especially about um, Satan, he doesn't care if you serve him. He cares that you don't serve God. 
he does he wants you first and foremost if he's not your god you be your own god mm -hmm. because as long as you're your own god you're not looking to god mm -hmm. so therefore there's all these divination practices that allow you to be your own god yeah. to work with these demons that may allow you to have good intentions or bad intentions because when demon actually started meaning negative is when you start looking at um kind of the the jewish texts mm -hmm. the um what would you call them the apocalyptic apocalyptic texts for example the book of enoch where he talks about fallen angels yeah. and talks about disembodied spirits how the fallen angels had sex with women then they had the nephilim then when god wiped them out on the earth uh, with the flood those spirits remained and they became these disembodied spirits that people can freely work with, mm -hmm. that they can talk to people, they can help people, because they're in the spiritual realm. They can't go anywhere until the end where God will cast them all. Mm -hmm. They're stuck on earth. So then Christians start coming in, and you see even the Greek, um, is it the Apocrypha, where they start mixing up, where the Jews said mm -hmm. other nations' gods, they start replacing that with the word demon. Mm. So now there's this negative association to other nations, gods, other deities. Now it's all negative, mm. right? I believe, of course, where I am now, any spirit that you work with outside of the Holy Spirit, it is negative. But it doesn't mean that those spirits will always present themselves scary to you. Mm -hmm. So now when you're working in things like tarot cards, um, palm readings, crystal walls, reading candle flames, you work with spirits, because otherwise you don't have that knowledge innately in yourself. Mm. When you're shuffling a deck mm. of tarot cards and it pops out, what do you think made it pop out? Oh, it was pulled out. Mm. It was pulled out by a spirit. Mm -hmm. And even when you're, when you're beginning to read it, you get an interpretation even from the higher spirit that you're working with. Mm. That's why we say it's demonic because you're working with the spirit outside of the Holy Spirit now. Does that make sense? It does. I wanna, so we were having a conversation before we came on set and I was explaining to you... Um, just about like when I did my tarot reading and it literally taken me down a spiral for two years where I was confused. I felt like I didn't know, initially before doing the tarot reading, I remember it so clearly before doing it, I kind of had a very clear direction of like what I was doing, like, you know, just various things that was going around me. And at the moment I'd finished doing that, it felt like all hell broke loose and like mm -hmm. I was confused about everything. And that went on for ages. And you had said something to me that about how, um, You'd ask me, like, was I religious before? Or, like, did I did I know God before? And I kind of told you that I did, but I didn't have... I wasn't like, oh, I'm a Christian, I'm a Muslim. I just was like, I believe in God because of my pre previous experiences. Mm. But I don't have... Like, I'm not attached to anything. So I want you to break that down further to me. Like, why did it affect me in that way when a lot of people... Some people have positive experiences of it. It doesn't make it right, but some people mm. have positive experiences of it. Kind of break that down for me a little bit more. Okay, so... If you are a child of God and you come out of God's covering... You're not coming out of God's covering into a blissful state. You're literally coming out into chaos because you know what godly peace feels like. So you're more sensitive to where there's not God's covering, where there's not godly peace. And those demons will eat you up. Hmm. Also, you're coming into covenant with something that you don't know, that you don't understand. You don't know what spirit that person's working with. You don't know... Yeah, you feel it, that? No, it's so insane because every single time I think about, like, after that period, I always have one specific facial expression from the woman who did my reading yeah. that just felt dark. Mm. Like it just, not because she was trying to, you know, eat me alive or per se, but I just always, anytime I think about that particular instance, I always have that visual aid like comes to my mind. Like that was not good for me. Like that yeah. was not good. Yeah. So also the spirits that people are working with, you come into agreement with that, you will see the manifestations in your life. Certain spirits, and I and I really, I'm doing a hundred day prayer challenge, and we, we we read the Psalms every morning at four a.m. And there's a part in the Psalm where God says, "I don't need you to feed me. If I'm hungry, I don't need you to feed me. I don't need you to water me." And for me, that was just so touching because I came from a place where these entities consistently wanted sacrifices. They wanted food. Yeah. They wanted drink. They wanted you to put more things on their altar. Mm. If you allow a spirit into your life mm. that is a hungry spirit. Right, you come into agreement with somebody who uses the spirit that they're always putting food on the altar. You come into agreement with that spirit, but you don't put food on the altar. What's gonna happen? It's gonna eat me alive. It's gonna be very upset, mm. and it's going to manifest that into your own life because you you are in communion with something that you don't understand. Mm. Like I said, spirits have personalities that you don't understand the temperament. When I used to make um, covenants with my ancestors, 
ancestors and um, say, okay, I'm going to come and refill your altar on Tuesday. And I'd forget life happens. And then all of a sudden this TikTok video would come up. If you've made your ancestor a promise and you're not doing it, you need to go back and feed them because something bad's about to happen. Mm. And it was that consistent loop of, I can't stop, I can't stop, I have to make sure that I'm on this. Mm. So that's probably another reason why you experience all that chaos in your life. For the people who don't have that chaos and it's like this fun experience, oh, I'm going to do that again, like mm. I want da da da. If it's so much of like an amazing experience for them, what makes astrology and tarot readings and all of these things that bad or makes it a big deal? So the very nature of witchcraft is that witchcraft is addictive. It is very addictive in nature. Mm -hmm. The same way when you um, take a shot of anything that's addictive mm -hmm. and you have this incredible high, you're high, you're enjoying, but the moment you stop is when you feel the effect. So for those people who are like, oh, well, what's the point? Try and stop and see if those things are so good you will see the effect in the stopping, mm -hmm. right? And I know your question is, why even stop in the first place? The reason why I think, and I strongly believe that people should not be partaking, is like I said, first of all, you don't understand the cost that's associated with working with these spirits. Sure, nothing is going wrong in your life. Nothing is being taken from your life. But what about your grandchildren? What about your great-grandchildren? I had a case uh, recently, because I have a lot of people messaging me for calls and consultations and stuff. I had a woman come to me and she was just having dream after dream about mermaids around her, pulling her into the ocean, trying to feed her food. And she was like, it's getting so distressing, I don't understand. As I began to pray with her, the Lord showed me um, a river and a grandmother and that the grandmother um, offered her lineage to a sea god. Now, she didn't know this, she was like, Mm, all my grandmothers are Christian. And I said, this is what I'm seeing. So how about you go away and come back to me if you find anything else? But I know what the Lord is showing me. Mm -hmm. She goes away, she comes back, she says, you won't believe this. My, my mother just told me that my grandmother has a farm with a river behind it. And there was things that happened in that river to do with our bloodline. We go through a fast. Um, we go through a fast. I pray for her. All of that immediately stopped. So... Sure, her grandmother had a great time doing witchcraft, mm -hmm. but because her child, uh, her grandchild does not want to do witchcraft as well, come and see the chaos. Her relationships were being messed up. She herself had very terrible experiences at night. Her child, her child, the granddaughter, mm -hmm. was having awful time. So this, this is the point. People don't actually understand what are you giving up. Mm -hmm. Spirits are not free. God is the only one that says, you don't owe me nothing because I created everything. All these other spirits don't have a creation. Mm -hmm. They didn't create anything. Mm -hmm. So they want. You see what I mean? Yeah. One thing about... Go on. Yeah. One thing about tarot cards and tarot cards in particular. Mm -hmm. I think it's very easy to say, oh, you know, tarot cards are demonic. Just leave them, just leave them, just leave them. People don't understand the history and, and the people associated in tarot. So, okay, cool. You have, tarot, you have a tarot deck, 78 cards. 22 is the major arcana, right? Arcana, rather. And that's where you get things like, and I'm sure that's what she used to read you, where you have like the hermit, the empress, the tower, mm -hmm. these things, these archetypes. Mm -hmm. That's what they used to shuffle and read for you. Now, originally, these decks were not used for divination. They were just used as a normal card game. When I started working in witchcraft and um, I heard pull out a tarot deck, we read tarot, and I said, I don't have a tarot deck. They said, pull out a normal stack of cards and use those. Tarot used to be used as a normal stack of cards until later it started being used for divination. The people who also use it for divination are people like I mentioned before, Alistair Crowley. Now, if you know the type of magic that he does and endorse, well, he's dead now, but endorsed in the books that he wrote about even including little children in sexual rituals mm -hmm. for different energy and all these weird type of things, all these um, sacrifices and sleeping with animals, him being part of the Hermetic um, Order of the Golden Dawn and stuff like that, they did tarot card readings, they did astrology, they did all these other forms that Christians are trying to mix in. So if him doing tarot card readings, doing astrology, doing um, believing in zodiac signs, and he's still able to allow children to be involved in these weird things, what makes you think that God will let you 
sit with what he's sitting with mm -hmm. and it's not going to affect you at all mm -hmm. slowly and surely you will see yourself become more and i use the word de degenerate um not to hurt anybody but to explain that your idea of good and bad will begin to vanish you see people have this idea of well it's not really good it's not really bad it's gray mm. that's what occultism does to you mm. if you watched um did you watch black is king no by beyonce black is king black is king mm -hmm. um it's something that she released on disney when she released the Afrobeat album for The Lion King. Mm -hmm. No, I didn't watch it. Okay. Uh, maybe I shouldn't be endorsing it. At the time, <laughs> I really, at the time I really enjoyed it because it was a good body of work. Mm -hmm. But there's this, there's this part in it where there's a check, there's a checkerboard, but they're human beings mm -hmm. in the place of, you know what I'm talking about? There's human beings in the place of, um, of these boards. Yeah. And there's a voiceover that says that darkness and light, they're in an ever, um, everlasting dance, right? They're not fighting, they're dancing. Darkness and light aren't enemies. You need both of them. So this idea, and this is why people quickly start off in good magic but find themselves in bad magic. Mm -hmm. Because your idea now of what is bad begins to shift mm -hmm. and it shifts and the lines become blurred. So the reason why you don't touch these things is because before you know it, you'll be doing magic with a K. Crazy. Crazy. I want to talk about astrology just a little bit because I know it's like a big buzzword for so many of us, especially people online, like, you know, it'll be your birth and you're like, I'm a Scorpio, it'll be your birth. I keep saying Scorpio because that's what, you know, that's my birthday. Yeah, yeah. Or, you know, it's a, I'm an Aries or I'm a Cancer, blah, blah. And you have all these labels that you automatically attach to yourself. And recently, like, I've found myself like very much like, oh, mm -mm, yeah. I'm just with me. Like, hey, that's just, you know, I don't know. I don't know about all of this, but I want you to kind of break down to me how there was a woman, um, I don't want to butcher her name, but she was an ex-astrologer and she made a whole video and I found it so fascinating. She, she was woman. saying, yeah, I think her name's Angela yeah, Lucci. I, I think I know her. Yeah. yeah. Gosh, that video, my mind was blown, but she was breaking down the, that when you attach yourself to a star sign, like whatever, any star sign, you take on the characteristic of a demon that is waiting for like a home to kind of sit in because demons don't have any home. So I just want you from your knowledge to kind of break that down to me because I think it's just so important for people who want to attach themselves to various star sciences. And I know a lot of us do it as a joke and we're like, yeah, I'm a Scorpio, like I'm a this, da, da, da. But I think there's a lot of truth to it that, you know, we just be, be really helpful people, for people to understand. So if you read um, the Testament of Solomon, now, the Testament of Solomon, it's not included in the scripture, and mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's just another work outside, like the Book of Enoch. But the whole idea is when God commissioned Solomon to build his temple, mm -hmm. um, Solomon used demons to build the temple. And God gave him a ring where he could subdue demons. So even in some magic, they would do different rituals. Um, they would do different drawings of different symbols that Solomon used to make sure that demons don't attack you, don't possess you, all this type of stuff. But in that book, the demons come to Solomon and Solomon is asking them questions like, what are you doing? Like, what's the point? He, he interviews each of them. So what's your name and what do you do? And there were these demons that came to him and said, we are in the stars, we hide in the stars. This is a very ancient book. Mm -hmm. It says, we hide in the stars and the children of men, meaning mankind, mm -hmm. they will worship us as gods mm -hmm. and they will assign themselves to us. This is zodiacs now. So when we are looking up into the stars, this is my destiny, this is who I am. We are now attaching ourselves to those same, um, de those same demons that mm -hmm. explained at that time, this is what they're going to do. Mm -hmm. They're going to find their their personalities in us everybody has a different personality that's that's obvious everybody has different characteristics mm -hmm. people will tend to have similar characteristics uh, based on where you live and all these weird types of things who your family is um, country regions all this type of stuff but what happens is when people look at zodiac for example and they say or a taurus is a b c d because they're an earth sign mm -hmm. and they look towards you there's this thing in psychology that's called bias that i think people don't actually realize that it actually happens so cognitive bias you believe something therefore you look for things that associate and make it make sense mm -hmm. so for example I, what, what did you say you were again um scorpio scorpio mm -hmm. i don't know much about that what, what are they like oh according um, to the um 
what would be our biggest thing? Someone say something aggressive. Aggressive. Yeah, I okay. think Scorpio is going to be aggressive, huh? Toxic. 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 Okay, cool. Yeah. So essentially the whole thing about cognitive bias, so I know that you're a Scorpio, and like you said, the whole toxic thing, I'm right? I'm not a Scorpio. You're, you're not a Scorpio. I'm away from that now. But <laughs> hallelujah. But people who claim to be Scorpios, yeah. people say, oh, they tend to be toxic. Now I see something that you've done, right? Maybe you had every reason to be upset, mm -hmm. but... In my mind, I already know that Scorpios are toxic. Mm. So I'm already using that to reinforce my belief. So it's like, regardless of if you acted differently, I'm not even looking at that. Mm. I'm just looking for every single action. Oh, it says here that they're like this. Hmm, have they been like this? Oh my gosh, yeah. Mm. So yes, there's a spiritual element, but also human beings allow themselves to kind of be brainwashed into these things. Yeah. And then also you find yourself acting in accordance to what you've read. Exactly. Yeah. That's crazy. Now we're in the month of October. Yeah. Right. You know, Halloween is here. Everybody's outside wearing this, wearing that. From my research, one thing that's kind of been coming up is that, you know, in the month of October, witchcraft is intensified. Yeah. Is that is there truth to that? Yes, there's truth to that. So there's a lot of rituals that happen during October. Um, and I'm guessing, would you like me to just explain the whole Halloween thing and all, whether Christians should partake i think let's break it down let's go from what you're about to exp explain yeah so about it being intensified yeah so there is a lot of weird things that happen in october so if even if you look at statistics mm -hmm. a lot more missing people tend to happen in october a lot more murders tend to ha happen in october so if you just look at months right and look at the trends you see that a lot of weird things happen in this month so yes um also in just the belief of halloween mm -hmm. this idea that the spiritual realm and the physical realm the line between them becomes, the veil rather, becomes extremely thin, mm. right? So See, I've heard that before, sorry yeah. to cut you off, but I've heard that before and I'm like, what does that actually mean? What is this veil? Is it, are we, is it a good veil, bad veil? What's, what makes it, just what is it? So the Celtic belief behind it, because that's kind of what originated, um, originated Halloween, mm. is this idea that spirits from the other side can come manifest physically in this plane like us okay usually spirits can't do that right they have to come they possess somebody or they they do weird things like for example candles like i told you when you read a candle the spirit is manipulating it in some way when they say that the veil becomes really thin they don't have to do all those things now mm. they can almost cut you can almost see them with your own eyes because it's 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 so i don't know how to explain it it's so thin <laughs> Does that make sense? Yeah, 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 it does. But you wouldn't know. So, like, someone, I wouldn't know that this is a, a, some, someone from the other side. Or I would know. It depends how much discernment you have. Okay. Because everybody is in costumes on that night, how would you know? And that's the point of Halloween. Mm. That's why they did it. That's why people wore costumes. Because there will be things coming on from the... That's, that's what their belief was. There's things coming on from the other side. Also, you don't want them to see you as a human being and attack you. Mm -hmm. So you want to dress up mm -hmm. and also camouflage in with that night. And therefore, that's what they did. And what do, what do they do on that night? So um, in the Celtic belief, or the, the Druids rather, they had different ceremonies that they do. So they had like a harvest festival, mm -hmm. uh, just celebrating the end of the harvest. Um, they also did... There was a lot of cultural things along with actually mm. just the spiritual beliefs. Yeah. So they had parties, people drank, people had celebrations. Again, that's mainly to do with the harvest. Yeah. But yeah. For a lot of us, you know, Halloween has been designed to be this like very harmless, like even when I think about my childhood, like, you know, you would have your your mum saying to you, close the door, da, 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 don't do this. And I would make fun of it. Like, it's not that deep. We're just dressing up. I'm just wearing this. I'm just... Where uh, being a bunny, I'm just being a cat, I'm just being Spider Man, all these various, you know, harmless, harmless things that, you know, we kind of attach it to. But in a way, are we almost practicing things that we shouldn't be practicing by seeing it in this way because we don't know truth? Um, I don't know if you're gonna like my answer. Yes and no. Okay. I say yes and no simply because when it comes to Halloween, the whole, how we got to the point, because originally it was called sewing, yeah. right? That's the Celtic belief. How we got to the point of Halloween is because it was called Hallow's Eve, right? The Hallow's Eve. And that's because when the, uh, when the Catholics came into that region, 
Catholics never tore down anyone's like faith. They kind of just incorporated their holidays in with their own. Mm -hmm. So you have All Saints Day, November the 1st, where they pray for saints that have been martyred. They celebrate the saints that died. Then you have All Souls Day, November the 2nd, where they try to pray souls out of pur purgatory, mm -hmm. right? So All Hallows Eve was the night before the holy day, mm -hmm. right? Hallow means holy, the night before the holy day. So even those Catholics themselves, they would also dress up and go knock on people's doors and um, say, if you give us candy, we'll pray for your dead ones. We'll pray them out of purgatory, right? So there was a really big Catholic influence in there. That's why the All Hallows Eve got shortened to Halloween. Mm. The thing is, were they right to do that? In my opinion, no. Because they are also now yoking with things that came before them, yeah. right? You're now trying to mix something that's light with something that's darkness. And the Bible says that they don't, they can't mix. Mm. So all the people who are calling it harmless, whatever, cool. If you want to dress up, why do you have to dress up on October 3rd? You're only doing it because other people are doing it. In which case you're trying to use naivety as an excuse to participate in other cultures, spiritual practices. Mm -hmm. And like we explained before, you can't do something like that and not expect repercussions. Again, going back to, I believe, Alistair Crowley yeah. says, um, I think it was Alistair Crowley or, or one of the head of uh, the Satanic Church mm -hmm. said, I'm so glad that Christians allow their kids to celebrate Halloween, to celebrate the devil one day a month, uh, one day a year. Mm. What does that mean if he's saying one day a year is enough for us? What chaos is being unleashed in that one day? If someone's watching this and they're thinking, you know what, I've changed my mind about Halloween, you know, I realise that it might be a dark day and a day that I probably shouldn't practice or go outside and do what I assumed was harmless, mm. what should we be doing instead? Like, is there something that you can do to almost protect yourself from anything? If you're a Christian. If you're just anybody. If you're just anybody. Yeah. Um, I, I can't really speak for those who are not Christians yeah. because you're, you're already in trouble, to mm. be honest. But if you are a Christian and you're praying, you're reading your Bible and you have a good, strong fasting life, you don't have to worry about all this weird stuff that's happening on the outside. Mm -hmm. Make sure your kids are home at the right time, yeah. but you're protected already by being a child of God. The other people, I don't know what, I, mm. yeah, I don't know, is it? Turn, <laughs> turn your life to Jesus, <laughs> come, come to God. Okay, okay I wanna go back a little bit to almost here, because you've said a lot about you know your journey of coming into this uh, into this light, into witchcraft, and you coming out of it. I think it's been such a huge, huge, huge journey. One thing I've been watching in preparation for our conversation is that, like I was saying before, to become a witch or to join that that culture, you have to do a lot of things. And it's similar to like when you want to come out of it, it's not just like, I'm going to open the door, I'm done now, bye. You know, you have all these people that you've been, Lilith and hey God, Lucifer, and all these yeah, various yeah. people that, you know, you've been attached to, that it's not just like an easy process to leave. So I want to go to go back to your process of leaving and kind of get into this space you're in now. That is a whole story in and of itself. But when I left, um, when I began to leave uh, witchcraft, I had moved in with my partner. And at this point, we were just living a crazy, whatever, sinful life, trying to play house. We mm -hmm. had our daughter and stuff. And at one point, I'd like, uh, this is the first time I actually told the story, we kept arguing because although he was a strong Christian, he was like, what you're doing is wrong, like, and you need to stop because I feel like you're going to go to hell and stuff like that. And I was just kind of not having it in my mind. You're not even really a Christian. You're here, aren't you? Like, mm. you're just as bad as me. Don't judge me. That kind of thing. Until eventually he's like, look, I have a really strong conviction that although I'm not the best Christian, you need to get out of this. Can I just pray for you? And I'm like, fine. At this point, I remember I'm kind of, and it's really weird how we still stayed in a relationship because I see myself as an enemy of God. He sees himself as a child of God. So here we are. How long get, were you guys together? Oh, we've been, we've been together kind of since we were like 15. Oh, so he's watched you throughout this whole process. He's watched me throughout this whole process. So he wasn't the same partner that you had mentioned earlier that there was a partner that told you to read, that had a book about magic in, in, Oh, no, no, that wasn't a part of that, was, that okay. was just a, there was on and off seasons. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Especially when I started witchcraft, mm -hmm. he was started pulling back okay. a lot and I was just going off. I had a very rebellious uh, stage. Cool, so it's a good that you clarified that actually. Yeah. <laughs> but now he's like, can I just pray for you? And I'm like, sure, why not? Nothing's going to happen. I, would, I need to make dinner soon anyway. Go ahead and pray for me. 
he just said he doesn't say lord may you save her lord can you just be so gracious to her you know you know the christian prayers mm -hmm. he just says everything that is not of god inside of you i command it to come out right now in the name of jesus i'm standing here with attitude listening to this prayer i'm completely out on the floor i am shaking as, as though someone has just electrocuted me and i can feel my voice change into a register i, I have a quite a deep voice but this was worse than manly deep. And I'm speaking, I'm aggressive, and I'm telling him to stop, like stop praying. Like whatever you're doing, just stop. And I'm thinking, oh, his, his witchcraft is, is like, it's bigger than mine. Like, I don't know what he's doing, mm -hmm. but I didn't associate it to God. As he's praying, things are just leaving. I can feel it. I can feel like them from the inside of me physically coming out of my body. After that, after deliver, deliverance, that was deliverance, I'm sitting there and he's not saying anything. I'm not saying anything. And I'm just looking down because I'm thinking, what the hell just happened? Mm -hmm. I don't know if I can say the H word, but I'm like, what just happened? Because there's no way. I don't believe in this. Mm -hmm. I don't believe this is powerful. And I've just gone on a, on a journey of getting knowledge, mm -hmm. of understanding. Mm -hmm. So how is it that I left you behind on my journey and you still bodied me mm. in this moment. After that, you'd think that I'd come to Christ and be so grateful and everything like that. I was so angry. And I told him, like, why would you do that? Mm. Like, what, what made you do that? I didn't want to go to God, even if he proved himself to be good, like the most powerful. I still had an anger and a resentment yeah. that needed to be worked out. But long story short, during that season, and he... And I both got radically saved whilst living together mm. from a point of sleeping in the same bed. He slept on the sofa for five months. We didn't sleep in the same bed, but we lived together during that time. We started fasting, reading the Bible, and each fast we'd go into, mm. I'd manifest again. I had some demon that was still trapped on the inside of me that hadn't come out. Yeah. And then one day when we're in a fast, he turns to me. He says, God just showed me a vision. And I'm like, what? He's like, you're going to go on TikTok and start healing people and delivering people and preaching Christ. Mm -hmm. And I'm laughing. Sure, fine, you got me here. I'm a Christian. I didn't say Christian. I kind of believe that maybe God might be good. Maybe what I did was bad. But I'm never going to preach to people. Mm. Of course, you know how the story ends. Yeah. Now I'm here preaching, mm. delivering, uh, talking to people about Christ. Um, I don't know if I answer your question. I kind of think. But no, you did. But yeah. I, guess, I think you fast tracked just a little bit because I was thinking, yeah. like, was there a specific moment that it, it, ch mm. it changed for you? Because obviously you were saying that you were against it. You know, why did you do that? What led to you now being convinced that okay, you know what? Let me let me for you to go from I'm a witch to now go to I'm gonna fast is like two completely yeah. different sides of the world. So, what happened to let to get I, you there? I watched these videos online of people that had gone from witchcraft to Jesus. Cause I'm like, is this even possible? Mm -hmm. And I'm watching them and all of them are saying the same thing. My spirit guides were demons. My spirit guides are not, they weren't what I thought they were. Mm -hmm. These deities are not what, the, what I thought they were. And I'm like, this can't be true. I am going back into my meditation. So guys, this just happened. He just prayed for me and this just happened. And I'm watching all these videos. What's going on? Like, are you guys what I think you are? And they're just like, stay away from him. You need to leave him. In mm. fact, you need to break up with him, move out. He's doing some witchcraft. He's confusing you again. You've come to such a good place. So that's where the, me the warfare really started in the mind. Because mm -hmm. you have to accept, I did really bad things. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't willing to accept that. But the more I started praying and just saying, okay, let me just see what happens if I pray. And I'd see these spirit guys get angry. And I'd be like, why are you getting angry? I was allowed to um, do meditations to Buddha. I was allowed to pray to Krishna. I used to pray to Krishna, uh, the Hindu god. Mm -hmm. um, oh, all you, these. You've been all over the world. I was, I was a pagan child. Like, I had my collection of, yeah. of gods. I did all these things. But the moment I start praying and saying, okay, Jesus, if you're real, can you show me? Mm -hmm. Can you come back? Can you do whatever? Mm -hmm. Oh, I forgot to tell you something. Yeah, go on a moment. When I was. When I was, before we moved in together, I hit this really low point where I had, I was so addicted to weed, I was so addicted to alcohol. And remember, I was angry at God. Yeah. And this one night, I didn't even live with my daughter at this time because I was in such a bad state. She was with my mom. Mm -hmm. And I cried out to God and I said, I hate you. 
I hate you and you are not allowed to send me to hell because you've never been good to me. Mm. You've never saved me. You never protected me. Mm. So even if I curse you, it's your fault. Mm. Then immediately I had a vision of a man that came, prayed for me and prayed for my daughter. And that was it. I fell asleep. I think I was so drunk. I fell asleep straight after that. Mm -hmm. So to now come into this place where my partner moved in, prayed for me, prayed for my daughter. Now we're in Christ. You asked me about um, the warfare that happened. Mm -hmm. The warfare that broke out in that house was ridiculous. I had nights where I would sleep and I'd wake up and I was levitating. This is the warfare after you've chosen to to stop praying. To... to stop praying. Oh, to stop praying. Okay. I, I was just I was just exploring Christianity now. Okay. I was allowed to pray to Krishna and all these other deities, like I told you before. But when it came to Jesus, that's when I started seeing a really ugly side of them mm. and before i had incorporated jesus as an ascended master in my practices mm. but i never acknowledged him as god now i was coming before him not jesus the master jesus the teacher the rabbi but the son of god can you actually free me if i'm gone too deep can you actually free me and i just watched them begin to get angry like what are you doing are you um the way that they use is are you betraying us that's when i realized i had to run that's when I started fasting, because I was like, for them to say I'm betraying them, mm. oh, this is not what I thought it was. This is not love and light. This is not peace and sunshine, like people try to make these practices out to be. I would um, have nights where I'm levitating over my bed, um, and I'm waking up and I just fall right onto my bed. Um, there was one night, during this time, as um, I was beginning to pray, I just felt this urge to disconnect off social media because of all the things I had been teaching about libations and um, and all the witchcraft and the amount of witches I had on social media. Mm. I disconnect. Then all of a sudden, after like three, four months, I come back again. The moment I come back again, as I'm clicking it, something on the left side of me says, oh, you're here again, right? And it says, turn around and look at me. And I'm, my daughter's in bed with me. She's on my right side. And I'm turning around slowly. She reaches over, grabs my face, pulls it over, and says, Mommy, let's pray. She does this short prayer that I taught her. Thank you, God, for protecting me, keeping me safe. In the name of Jesus, amen. Mm. That was her prayer. Mm. After she finishes that, she goes, Mommy, behind you is a monster. And that's, that's when I started call, uh, At this point, me and my partner stopped living together because glory be to God, he had just worked us out to the point where we were like, we even need to separate, we can't be living together. All those things that happened, it was extremely hard to leave. And even now, sometimes I still get attacked, like I told you before, I, mm. when I agreed to be on this, mm. um, I had a sleep paralysis because I'd never told this story fully. Clearly, it's not easy to get out, mm -hmm. but you can. Because even in that place, I say that God kidnapped me. I was his enemy. He still loved me enough to bring me back. Yeah. Amen. Amen. <laughs> With a story like today or a yeah. day like today where you've actually told, like it's your first time telling the full testimony of everything that's happened. And from the short phone call that we had the other day where you told just a brief Overview. A part of your story and you still had that experience of sleep paralysis that you haven't had in ages does this are, are you scared like are you thinking in your mind like after today i don't know what i'm going to experience what are the thoughts that you're currently feeling i know satan's going to try and come for me mm. i know I, I like i know that's happened when i've done deliverances for other people mm -hmm. um and there was a point where i was delivering this lady and i looked in her eyes and i saw Lil like i saw it so clearly and I said, Lilith, come out of her. She doesn't know, because this is my first time telling the testimony. She didn't know that I used to work with her as a deity. Mm. She looks back at me and she goes, look at us talking again. Right after I've just commanded Lilith to come out of her. Mm. So after that, I've had, pe I've had um, accounts message me online yeah. with Lilith123 or whatever messaging me saying, where are you? Weird things. Remember, people are demon possessed, so they don't even know that they're doing this. But the demons inside of them know. So I know it's going to be back. I know there's going to be weird things, spiritual things that happen, mm. but I trust that it had to come out at the right time. No, absolutely. Can I ask you a question? Yeah. With everything that you're doing now and, you know, you coming out on the other side of this, like, what is your intention? What is your, what is your aim now? Uh, to help people get from darkness to light, to help people go from um, naivety. And I realise the Lord sends me to a lot of broken people, a lot of people that... They could believe in God, but they reject the idea of God yeah. first. Mm -hmm. And even though they've been raised as Christians, they leave the church. 
I'm consistently always going to those people for some reason. The same way that I was hurt and broken mm -hmm. and I needed the love of Christ is the same way I'm not afraid of witches. I know what you do. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I know. I'm not afraid to come and lay my hands on you. I don't think you're going to curse me. I know you can't curse me. So my intention is really to help people. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Thank you for having this conversation with me. <laughs>